tell us, oh, if you eat too much sugar, you have diabetes. So they used to discourage us from taking stuff like ice cream, granulated sugar, and any other thing that seemed like sugar. Wait, this is not saying that taking a lot of sugar is actually good, but I'm trying to correct a misconception that taking in sugar is the cause of diabetes. So to start with, what exactly is diabetes? Now, diabetes is a clinical condition that is characterized by high blood glucose level hyperglycemia hyper meaning above normal gly the gly in between glyce or gly in between referring to glucose and amia the end referring to blood so high glucose in the blood i hope you get my point so now that we understand what diabetes is then what exactly is the cause of diabetes to first understand what causes diabetes it is important to understand the types of diabetes then we can then move on to the cause of each type of diabetes now for diabetes you have the insulin dependent which is also known as type 1 you have type 2 known as non-insulin dependent diabetes and you have you have other types like gestational diabetes you also have um, diabetes related to medical conditions now let me pick one um each one after the other now I said type 1 is insulin dependent, I said type 2 is non insulin dependent. There's a common word there which is insulin. Now let's move into anatomy and physiology a little bit. Now in your body there is something called the pancreas. Now the pancreas, I won't dive too deep into the anatomy, just chill, chill, chill. I'm not trying to like flaunt or do a show off here. Now the pancreas has some cells known as the alpha and beta cells of lager hands lager hands that's i think that's how it's pronounced and one of these cell produces what is called insulin now what is insulin insulin is an hormone that is targeted towards reducing the level of glucose in your body and how does it do how does it do this it converts excess glucose in the blood to glycogen which is a storable form of glucose when it is in glycogen form, your body can store it and just keep it to when there is little or minimal glucose in the blood and your body needs more glucose, then it is converted back into glucose. But this time, it is done by another hormone known as glucagon. Now, let me break it down. In your body, now, sorry, let me repeat it. In your body, there is something called pancreas. It's like a leaf-like plant. Inside the pancreas, you have two cells, which are the alpha and beta cells of Lagerhans. And one of these cells produces what is called insulin. Insulin is an hormone that helps you break down excess glucose and convert it to glycogen, which is the storable form in your body. And when your body needs glucose and there is not enough glucose supply in the blood, glycogen is converted back into glucose by glucagon. I hope you are good. Now, when there is a problem with insulin or the production of insulin, or the metabolism of insulin that is when diabetes happens i'll repeat that when there's a problem with insulin its production or its metabolism then diabetes happens so it's not exactly the amount of sugar you take into your body that determines if a person will come down with diabetes now that we've understood that part now let's move into the types of diabetes that earlier mentioned now i said the first type is insulin dependent now there are other names to it it's also called type 1 and it's also called juvenile onset now in this particular type of diabetes what occurs is that there is an autoimmune disorder what i mean by autoimmune disorder is the fact that your body cells are fighting against your body cells do you get that? Auto means automatic. Like automatic, something that is happening on its own. Your body cells are fighting against each other. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but that is exactly what happens. And what happens is this, is that cells of the pancreas that are supposed to produce insulin are being destroyed. So there is little or no insulin production. So whenever the person takes glucose in, Glucose, which is actually contained in the majority of our popular African food, your yam, your apple, your tungo, shinkafa, your starch, your, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Think of anything, your gari, any other thing, eban. Majority of the food we eat, rice, spark, majority of the food we eat contains glucose. Now, I'm not saying this food 
is bad now god has actually created our body in a way that it can manage the amount of glucose we take in now in type 1 diabetes when insulin is not being produced at all glucose cannot be converted to glycogen which is i earlier said is the storable form in your body so the level of glucose present in your blood is high hence hyperglycemia results and the person comes down with diabetes and this particular type of diabetes is called insulin dependent because that person has to depend on artificial or external insulin either by most times by injection so they have to take insulin injection frequently most times before they eat or in fact they, there are different um types of insulin but i won't really want to go into that you have the short acting the long acting in fact just know that they take insulin that's it so once they take insulin it helps them to break down glucose which is too much or excess in their bloodstream into glycogen to be stored by the body i hope you get that and why is it called juvenile onset this type one is called juvenile onset because it usually starts at the juvenile age so type one insulin dependent juvenile onset that is the first time now moving to the second type of diabetes which i earlier mentioned as non-insulin dependent non-insulin dependent also known as type 2 and also known as adult onset diabetes now from the name i think you can begin to like understand that the pathophysiology or the cause is quite different from that of type 1. now what happens in type 2 is that insulin is being produced in the body now there's insulin so why would diabetes re result if insulin is being produced now there's something in your body there's some um, cells in your body called receptors now a receptor is like the sim card on your mobile phone now imagine you have a mobile phone but there's no sim card and you have a friend that wants to call you you won't get that call despite the fact that you have a mobile phone because the sim card which is like a very tiny piece compared to the size of your phone is not present so imagine if we had lots and lots of insulin being produced but the receptors are not recognizing insulin still glucose is present in the body so this person doesn't need insulin hence the name non-insulin dependent it's not as if this person needs insulin but this person needs glucose to be converted to glycogen so they are giving oral hypoglycemic agents now from the two words hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia hyperglycemia refers to excess while hypoglycemia refers to the down or the opposite of hyperglycemia which is lower levels of glucose in the blood so what these drugs do is to help break down glucose into glycogen and to be stored by the body now those are two major types of diabetes but there are still other types but let me rest okay so the third type i'm talking about now is the gestational diabetes now this is the one that occurs in pregnant women hold on hold on hold on hold on i didn't say every woman that gets pregnant will have gestational diabetes that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying that this form of diabetes usually occurs during pregnancy and why is that some of the hormones produced by the placenta the placenta referring to the organ that connects the mother to the child are um insulin antagonizing or anti-insulin in nature in other words they work against insulin let me take it again the placenta has hormones that it produces like all this human placenta like lactogen and all, all sorts they are being produced by the placenta but they have an insulin antagonizing effect or they are anti-insulin in nature in other words they work against insulin so it more or less stops insulin from its normal work or its normal job or its normal task of converting glucose to glycogen hence some of these women come, come down with what is called gestational diabetes sometimes it resolves after pregnancy and sometimes it may not result after pregnancy resolve rather after pregnancy hence the person comes down with second type that type 2 diabetes then we now have diabetes that are related to many other disease conditions now if you notice what i've been saying since morning of if you've been following me you will understand that diabetes is not exactly caused by the amount of sugar you take in but 
by your body's ability to convert the glucose to glycogen now there are some factors that make someone at risk of coming down with diabetes and the first one being age now age is um so much associated with diabetes especially type 2 which is the one that starts um later in adulthood hence its name adult onset another thing is heredity yeah it's if your parents or if you're from a family where people have diabetes there is a very very high chance that you are going to later on come down with diabetes later in life so it's advisable that you keep checking your blood sugar rates as early as possible so as to detect whenever diabetes results and you start managing it as soon as possible another thing that could actually prone someone to having diabetes are drugs if a person is placed on corticosteroids and another thing is if the person has a liver condition so those are some of the common things that could actually make someone or predispose a person to diabetes now i haven't explained the little i know about diabetes because <laughs> there there are a lot a lot a lot of more part of physiology related to diabetes that i may not be able to give out now but i think i've given out the basic thing every person can understand in as far as diabetes is concerned now most times diabetic patients are placed on nutritional management in other words their diet is altered and please there is a misconception that once a person has diabetes the person cannot take glucose the person can still take food containing glucose that is carbohydrates majorly but it has to be in a reduced volume because if the person doesn't take glucose then the person can fall into hypoglycemia which is the opposite of diabetes mellitus sorry i've been talking about diabetes mellitus this morning please there are other types of diabetes you have diabetes in cpdus and so, some other things so diabetes mellitus is what i've been talking about all day i hope i didn't confuse you anymore but with that being said don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it and check out my other videos on health education i'll see you in my next video bye bye